Dear Lauren, my husband and I have been married for 15 years and have children together. Our marriage has never been physically what it should be. We have struggled emotionally since the beginning. It's been a difficult road. About two years ago, he moved into the guest bedroom and things really devolved. A year and a half ago, I met someone else, also married with kids, and we started an affair and fell in love, or so I thought. He supported me emotionally in ways I'd never been supported. I felt loved and cared for and safe and so important. There was an intense physical connection I've never experienced. We talked about being together long term. About a year after this began, I discovered he had lied to me about a trip he'd taken with his family. About a month after that, my husband discovered the affair. We remained in contact for another several months and I constantly felt like I had to end it, but was unable to. I loved him and he had become my best friend. Shortly after, I told him I suspected my husband was monitoring or tracking me and he ghosted me. It's been two weeks. Our last day of contact was a fairly normal one. He told me he loved me, etc. I'm devastated. I've reached out a handful of times asking if we can talk, but I've gotten no substantive response. It's been the most difficult two weeks I can remember. Neither my husband or I have made a decision regarding what we want to do regarding our marriage. But regardless, I need to move on from this. I speak to a therapist every week, but I'm still struggling immensely. I'd appreciate any support you could provide. Sincerely, Kelly. Okay. No. Michelle, come and get her, please. <laughs> I'm coming, oh. sweetheart. I love you. <laughs> Kelly, our letter writer, is dealing with a breakup. A breakup on top of a fair discovery. It sounds like the marriage was not in a good place when this affair started. And Kelly's really left with that same issue at the end of the day. What is she going to do with her marriage? Regardless of whether the affair is the future relationship for her or not, it still leaves her marriage in the same place that she left it, in the same place where she began. And that work is going to be what she's going to have to get to a place of being able to focus on sorting through for herself. In the best case scenario, the affair showed her what the best of a relationship could be. And at the same time, there's significant things that are really lacking in that person, in that partnership, when the rubber met the road. And the limitations of that person and of what he could be to her became apparent when things really got squeezed in that moment of uh, truth, so to speak. So I have some thoughts for Kelly about her affair partner and how she can help work through the grief. But I guess I'll just say, first off the bat, it's only been two weeks. It's going to take a long time to grieve that relationship, what it meant to her, what it did for her, and grieve the absence of it in her life. So that takes time, and she should process that for as long as she needs to. And I'd love to talk with you, Michelle, too, a little bit about um, ways that she could process that for herself. So what do you think about Kelly's letter, Michelle? Yeah, I think you know, where you draw the attention to that inflection point in the affair, and you've talked about this in some other responses and other videos that you've done, is that there always is this inflection point, right? And so that's really what she got to see is that there's a lot of reasons people ghost. I think of one of them being this avoidant style that may actually be how he shows up in his marriage, which is why he's finding himself in an affair and possibly where they would find themselves if they were to have continued on. This is a long affair. We're talking over a period of time, a year and a half ago, and unable to provide an answer or communicate. And again, there's a lot of reasons for that. In particular, I think of where she says that her husband, she alludes to her husband possibly tracking and finding out he may not have been ready to leave his marriage and not been in the same place with his marriage that she was in her marriage. And so this pressure of possibly her husband finds out, she he calls my wife and th this whole possibility of drama is I'm out and they just 
hit the road. So that's where I see it as well as that when the squeeze came is where, how did he show up? And he showed out, <laughs> he took yeah. off. Yeah. Uh, so well said, Michelle, I think I couldn't echo your sentiments more. And also that avoidant tendency, when you've been in a relationship with someone for a year, I don't care if it's an affair, you still have a responsibility to that person and to the relationship and to simply disappear when you're, when you get scared because you are self-protecting or you're not able to be clear and communicative about what's really going on with you, that's irresponsible and that's not loving. And it doesn't mean that you need to hang around to find out what happens. You can certainly do what you need to do to take care of yourself and protect yourself, but communicate that. Don't yeah, it speaks to the them. emotional maturity, right? Or the lack thereof. And then to, I think it speaks to probably what it would have looked like in the yeah. re a real relationship. Yeah. So what I want for Kelly is for her mantra to be, this happened for me. When someone goes to you at the end of a relationship, when the rubber meets the road, that happened for you. The universe just protected you from something, right? And as you're grieving this relationship, remind yourself that him doing what he did was perhaps the greatest gift that could be given to you. And if you continue to lean into all your difficult feelings and your grief and the confusion and the pain, and you flip that narrative to this happened for me, has this happened for me? And you explore that question, I think your healing is going to be so much more productive after this. Mm -hmm. Do you have any final thoughts to Michelle? Yeah, I think back to your original points only been two weeks. And this is somebody that's been in and over life for a year and a half. But she also says here one sentence I want to pull on, I constantly felt like I had to end it, but I was unable to. And so she knew where it had to be it didn't end exactly in, in an ideal fashion or mature emotionally mature fashion, but she knew she wanted out and so it's the universe doing that for her i agree yeah yeah being patient and kind to herself in the grieving process it's a tough one yeah it really is and when you're in an affair and you're both married and one person is outed or their marriage ends or it's on unequal footing like this and the other person doesn't meet you where you need them to be that's all you need to know and so focus on your own journey, focus on your own healing, both inside of the family unit and for yourself, Kelly, mm -hmm. and know that his journey is his own. And for many reasons, all of which happened for you, he did not rise and meet you when the rubber hit the road. And the reasons for that, I trust will become apparent to you over time if they don't immediately. So just trust the process and know that things will be revealed to you over time about why this went down the way it did and just take care of your heart right now. And I hope this helps.